So let's take another example here. So this is the, almost the same as the previous command, except that we've got two layers, first of all. So we've got geom point, and this was the same as the previous one. And in the smooth layer, we made a change. We have said method equals lm within quotes, right? Earlier, we did not pass the method argument. So if I just jump back to the previous code, you see here, geom smooth mapping alone. We didn't say what the method was. And by default, it uses a locally smooth line, as I mentioned earlier. But we can tell it to plot the regression line instead of the locally smooth line by just saying method equals lm. And here I'm also demonstrating one other argument you can pass to it, and that is se equals false. Okay, if you remember in the previous example, we, we saw this, that around every smooth line is a gray area uh, or a colored area, which tells you uh, what the 95% confidence interval for the, the, uh, for the smooth value at that particular point is. Okay, now we may not want that. So when you don't want it, you just say SE equals false. So the net result of these two things will be that the lines that you get will be the linear regression lines for the three different types of drive, and you won't get the gray line for any of them. So that's what you get now. Okay, so you got three lines and no uh, confidence limits. That is because SC equals false, and you got straight lines as opposed to the curved lines that you got earlier because we said method equals LM. Okay. So I think sometimes when you've got the standard errors showing, sometimes it obscures some of the graph. So here we are able to see, for example, that the rear wheel drive cars are all uh, at the sort of uh, higher values of displacement. And the characteristics for both four wheel drive and front wheel drive are quite similar because if you look at their regression lines, they look at least close to being parallel, uh, except that the highway mileage for uh, four wheel drives is obviously less consistently less than that for uh, 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 the front wheel drives which again we would expect four wheel drive cars typically would be the heavy cars uh, and so they would have lower mileage so all of that is uh, understandable and it turns out that the rear wheel drive cars are all generally large vehicles okay so you can see all of that by plotting the data and if you just looked at the scatter plot you won't be able to make out these fine differences, okay? And that is what exploring data is all about. We're getting deeper into the data and able to make these kinds of, uh, to draw these kinds of inferences and gain these kinds of insights. Okay, so now let's just put everything together by looking at how things are working. So suppose we said geom smooth, mapping equals x is uh, displacement, y is highway. Of course, we've got only one layer, smooth layer, so that's all we're going to get. Okay, and we did not tell it what method to use, so it's using the default method. So that's fine. Now suppose we did exactly the same thing, except that in addition to x and y, which I have just shown with dotted lines here, uh, in addition to x and y, we also said group equals drive. Okay, so here, notice that we only mapped the x and y aesthetics. So it did not divide the data into multiple sets and plot a separate line for each set. So you just said, okay, I'm going to plot the entire data as one set and get one smooth line, okay? Now you can override that by having the group aesthetic, okay? So the group aesthetic is going to, what it's going to do is to tell the system to divide the data into multiple sets and plot a separate line for each set, right? But the group aesthetic doesn't tell it how to display it differently. So the, all the lines are going to be the same, right? So all these lines look identical. Okay, but because of the fact that we have said group by drive, we've got one line for each type of drive. Okay, but since the fact, since the display of the three lines is not different in any way, you don't see any legend. Okay, so typically uh, you may not use this very much because you're seeing three lines, but you don't know what each of those lines actually stands for. You might use it if you want to say, look, I just want to find out if there are serious differences between them, but I'm not at this point interested in knowing which is what. If that is the case, you can just use the group uh, aesthetic. Okay, so on the other hand, instead of the group aesthetic, I say color equals drive. Then that, of course, is going to divide the data into three parts, right? Because this, we are saying, I want the color to depend upon the kind of drive. So obviously it's going to divide into three parts, but 
each line is going to have a different color. Okay, so th that's the difference. So I just thought that this slide will be useful to, to bring together some of these ideas. We'll now look at something quite interesting. So here, take, the, take a look at this code. So we've got, this is sort of similar to what we've been using up to this point, saying ggplot data equals mpg, that's the data set. And we've got the two layers, the point layer, scatter plot layer, and smoothed layer, the smooth line. But notice that the mapping for these two layers is exactly the same. X is displacement, Y is highway, right? So it's the same mapping that we, the, the data is the same for both the layers. The mapping is also same for both the layers, right? Now, and of course you get this result, you, you get the scatter plot and then you get one smooth line. Of course, you're not seeing any extra colors for the points because we didn't have any color aesthetic. You're not seeing different lines for the smooth line because we didn't have any other aesthetics mapped here. So this is what we expect from this plot, uh, from this code, that is fine. But suppose I say, well, let me, instead of mapping displacement to the x-axis, let me map something else to the x-axis, right? So let's say we want to compare the city mileage and the highway mileage. So we want x equals cty, okay? As the code now stands, we have to make the change in two places, right? So we have to say x equals cty here and x equals cty here. It has to be changed in two places, okay? Now, uh, that may not be a great idea. It's just extra work for us. Knowing if we know that we're going to use the same aesthetics for both of the layers, we might as well put them in one place like this. Okay, so here note what happened. We said ggplot data equals mpg, mapping equals aesthetic. Both of these are now in the ggplot function call itself and not in the layers. They are in the ggplot function call itself. This is the first time we're really doing this. Okay, so this is also allowed. And in fact, in this particular case, this is actually preferable because both of these layers are using the same mapping. So why not put the mapping in the ggplot call? So what this leads us to is the fact that anything you put in the ggplot call, for example, even the data or any of the mappings, right? So the data and the mappings that you put in the ggplot call are kind of global in the sense they apply to all of the layers. They apply to all of the layers and so it makes things easy for us to put it into one place, right? Of course, we still have the flexibility to put additional aesthetics into other layers, not just aesthetics, additional things into other layers, okay? You can override what, whatever is globally put here, out here. All of that is possible, right? But if you don't state anything here, it's just going to derive it from the ggplot call. That's very convenient. So of course, the result is going to be still the same, so this is a very important thing to understand, that we are allowed to make global settings in the ggplot call, settings that will be common to all of the layers that are being used. And of course, the layers can override them as well, okay? Another interesting point that I just want to point out to you is that, of course, we have been using named arguments to ggplot and to geompoint and so on. In this particular example, we actually did not need to use named arguments. We could have just said ggplot mpg because as per the definition of ggplot, its first argument is in fact data. Okay, so we didn't have to name it because it's in the right position anyway. Similarly, the second argument is in fact the mapping. So again, we did not have to name this. We could have just said aes, etc. because the second argument is going to be in the correct place, so no need to name it. Similarly, for the aesthetic, the first two arguments for aesthetic by the definition of the function are actually x and y, right? So these two are going to be in the correct place. So again, we did not need to name these, right? So this code would work perfectly correctly if we had not named any of the arguments, okay? That's just an aside. The slide is meant to illustrate the fact that we can make global settings in ggplot. So notice this code here. So we've made the global settings. This is like the previous slide. So we have said the data is this, the mapping is this, both we've done within ggplot. But let's say that we want the points to be colored depending upon the class of the vehicle. But we don't want any such thing for the smooth layer. Then we can add that aesthetic alone to geom point. 
okay so notice that again there is a mapping and we've got the aesthetic but we've only mapped the color aesthetic so the x and y aesthetic are still going to come from the uh, from the definition we did within the gg plot call and only the color aesthetic is going to come from geom point so if you do this obviously you're going to get what we saw in the previous slide except the points are going to be colored differently okay so no impact on the smooth layer the smooth layer is just like it used to be but this uh, scatter plot layer the point layer has changed in that each point is now colored depending on the class of the vehicle okay so that's an interesting thing as well that we are allowed to override or add aesthetics in layers okay now of course since we defined color equals class only for geom point obviously that aesthetic applies only to that particular layer it doesn't apply to the smooth layer okay so we still get only one smooth line because it's as far as the smooth layer is concerned only x and y have been mapped we have not mapped anything else so we are telling it go with the whole data so one smooth line okay uh, so now here of course i'm just showing you something it's not it's not a uh, indication of good practice or anything so what we are trying to say is that we are in fact allowed to have different data for different layers okay so here we are saying ggplot data equals mpg and mapping x and y just like before and for the point we mapped color just like last time but look at the geom smooth layer for geom smooth we are saying data equals filter mpg class equals subcompact now the filter function we have not covered but you can understand what it's doing what it's doing is it's extracting only rows that meet a certain criterion which is class equals subcompact okay so this layer has a different data than this layer right because this layer got its data from the global definition so this is mapping the uh, this is plotting the entire data set whereas this layer is plotting only the subset of subcompact cars right so again what this is showing us is that each layer can have its own data okay so that's what you're seeing here that this smooth line this is somewhat of a misleading chart actually which is why i sort of walked back a little bit on this uh, because uh, one would thinking looking at it one would think that this smooth line represents the entire data in fact it doesn't it represents only the line for the subcompact cars okay so i would not recommend this as a good practice but i am using this only to illustrate a certain concept that different layers can have different data 